Hey guys, so today is all about uh, water conservation in a state that is quite dry. Uh, a lot of people have asked how I'm going to be doing some of the gardens that I'm doing with that situation uh, at hand. So let me just first of all talk about that for one second. California is a dry state and uh, we were at our old house, you know, constantly on water restrictions and things like that. But I had a small property, so it didn't matter quite so much in terms of, you know, being able to grow as many things as I wanted. Here we're in a different setting with a much bigger property. Now, I was actually amazed when I got down here. I did some research into the water supply for the county of San Diego, and I was pleasantly surprised. They have done such a good job managing water, and they've done what everybody in the state has said the state should do, which is put in desalinization plants. We've got this huge Pacific Ocean right out here, all the water we could ever need, and yet we're importing our water from Northern California, from you know Arizona, so it just doesn't make sense. Well, guess what? San Diego County did it. They have a desalinization plant. And along with that and other things that they've put in place over the past few decades, this county is one of the most responsible counties for water usage in California. In fact, they estimate that they are good with water, even if dry weather persists, until the year 2045. That's crazy. Now, this being a homestead and we have a bigger acreage to water, um, we are considering putting in a well. There's some people up the street who did it. Um, so we have to look into that. When I first bought the house, it said there was an abandoned well somewhere on the property. So I don't know if it wasn't deep enough. I don't know too much about wells, but I will be learning. But starting today, we're going to put in our or start to implement our water saving water catchment plan. So the first thing we're going to be doing is installing rain barrels. Um, there are four or five spots throughout around the house that we can install rain barrels. At the end of the video, I'll show you the one we, we bought. Um, it probably doesn't look like many rain barrels you've seen, but you'll see why in a minute. But um, I want to take you around the property and show you a couple of other things that we are going to be doing in terms of saving water, catching water. Uh, we're on a hill here, so runoff is a big issue, so stopping that from happening. So let's take a little walk and I'll show you a couple of ideas that we're gonna be implementing over the next year to three years. All right, so we're going into an area that I've never been with the camera, I don't think, um, and that is on the opposite side of this fence that shouldn't be here. I always say it's still our property on the other side of that fence. Well, I'm on that piece of property right now. I hope the wind is not too bad and that you could hear me. All right, so as you can see, I'm on the other side of the fence. The vegetable garden is going in over there, which I might add, I'm very happy with. It's coming along well. Um, but this area, if you, let me switch the camera here. This area comes down. It's quite a, a, a slope all the way down to the bottom and right through here is where all of the water runs down basically to the street and to my neighbor's yard. It has really contributed to erosion over the years and so what I'm planning on doing, I'm standing in what will be the Mediterranean countryside area of the uh, garden. So right down here at the bottom to catch all the water that comes down this hill we're gonna be installing a large, I'm first of all gonna build a berm here so the water doesn't just run down. And then on this side of that berm, there's gonna be a large swale. Now, if you've never heard of a swale, that is basically just a large uh, depression in the, in the soil, in the land, that usually is lined by rocks and gravel. It allows the water that's flowing down this hill to be caught up in something and then let that water return to the groundwater and not just run off to the street where it goes into the drain and is taken to the oceans. So that's the first idea here that we have on this side of the property at least. Um, let me take you over to, well actually I'm gonna go up this hill to the top where the water that comes down from the mountain and down the street that we live on uh, and right through our property. 
So right now we're at the apex of the hill that our kind of private driveway runs up. There's one house further that way. And the water then flows down this little road I'm walking on and it hits our driveway and there's two different ways it can go. First of all, it just goes down our driveway toward the garage, which fortunately they, they thought of that a long time ago. So the water doesn't run into the garage. I'll take you there in a minute. But right here, it's all, all the debris coming down the road fills this up pretty quickly. So before every storm, I have to come out here and shovel it out. But this water goes through a pipe that goes under the driveway and down under our trailer. So in a big storm like we had a few weeks ago, the water comes roaring down here. Fortunately, there is a trough that runs in front of the, the garage, goes under our trailer, and then comes out here on the other side, just right down here, and then it meets up. If you see, there's the pipe right there from that goes under the driveway, and then it goes down out into this area here. So if you remember, I had said that over here in the front English garden, there's gonna be a large pond with a water wheel and a mill and all that stuff, remember that? Okay, that's not just for looks, that is water catchment. All of that water can flow into there can also flow into the lower pond that's gonna be down in the tropical garden. And that can be pumped out. Any excess, if it starts to overflow, it can be pumped out to water, you know, anywhere we have that needs watering. If I didn't do that, then all of that water would go right out to the street and right into the oceans. So between those three two lakes or two ponds and the swale, we're gonna be catching a lot of water and not allowing it to leave our property. We do have four downspouts on our roof. And those four, and there will be five, once I have, I'm gonna be putting another um, gutter on the, uh, the far side of the new patio cover. So when I do that, we'll have five downspouts. Each one of those downspouts is going to have a rain barrel. And over here is the first one. Now we just installed this this morning. Um, so I have some video of that. I'm gonna play in just a second. But this barrel is 50 gallons, 45 or 50. And it's perfect for the Mediterranean garden because it looks like a wine barrel. That was not an accident. Uh, however, it's not quite as authentic looking as I want. So you know me. I will be painting this, um, these straps here, I will be painting probably black. And then if you look close, you can see there is wood grain and some detail that I think could be brought out even better by a little bit of a wash of paint on there and kind of rubbing it off, kind of like I did on the patio cover, if you saw that video. These barrels can also be daisy chained together. So if this fills up, it came with it came with a little spigot that you can drill. Oops, that you can drill into here. And this spigot goes in and then you could put another barrel next to it. So it was really actually very easy to install. I'm gonna flip over now to uh, the video of Emily and I, well, Emily was filming me installing it. So the first thing I had to do was put something to raise this up a little bit so that the hose has room to kind of come down. You can buy, um, a stand that's pre-made for this, but I'm cheap. So anyway, here we go. Right, so we're gonna put a little Teflon tape on. Teflon tape came with the barrel. All right, now the only thing we have to do is figure out where to cut this so that we can angle it into the barrel. So okay. I gotta figure out where we need to cut the downspout. I already took this off the bottom. So 
Got to be about right there. So we got to give it a good couple inches. So right about here. So we gotta crimp this to be able to get it in. That didn't go up as far as I thought it was going to. Because mm. uh, that, now it's going to be too... All right, so need a little bit of touch-up paint, um, but put the little filtery screen on. That's good to go. All right, so we are well on our way to, this is just the first step to a whole bunch of water conservation measures for our property. Hope you learned something or had fun watching. I'll see you guys next time.